So looking out there, so a lot of people complain about FPS issues in Arma. So actually pressing Shift F2 while playing the AO will take away some of your view distance, but will also increase your FPS. So if you struggle with your frames, I suggest using that. If you ever want to test a gun and you don't have it permabought already, or say you're new and you're deciding what to use your free permabuy on, you could actually rent a gun. So buy once cost two hundred dollars for the spar. You can rent a scope, the extra two hundred and fifty. Now you have to pay this every time you die, but it's a good way to test a gun in case you want to try it out in the AO, do a couple runs. You won't lose too much money. I definitely don't suggest doing this long term though. Alright guys, so in Arma, you have advanced movement. You have your normal standing, your normal crouch, and then lay down. In reality, there's more to it. There is some advanced movement. So control W is just stand at your highest. And if you hit control S, you'll start slowly going down. Down to a knee, down to a smaller crouch, an even lower crouch, then sitting, then laying down. And again, you have that, like even more laying down. So then control D will actually let you lay sideways. And then control A will let you lay the other sideways. Take advantage of the weapon spawns on top of the towers. This one spawned an SPMG. I don't believe it has a scope. Yeah, no scope on this one. So sometimes they spawn with a scope, sometimes they don't. But on top of towers can spawn lynxes. It can spawn an APDS lynx, sorry. So it's even better than normal lynx. Spawns SPMGs, rocket launchers, navids, and especially on infantry, very rarely, but it can spawn a AA Titan and or an AT Titan. So anti-tank Titan and or anti-air Titans. So take advantage of those. So holding towers as your stronghold can actually be huge. It's almost three points in the AO. When you get a group of people watching the same tower, it's very hard to take for the opposing team unless they get a group of players to do so also. And while you have a bunch of people in here, if you do get sniped, sniped at and you die, someone else can just come and revive you because you already have extra players nearby. Understanding the AO. So let me make sure I'm in my own channel here. So we'll do my group channel. <coughs> So as you see, our spawn is here, and I'm actually really glad to say it's playing out like this because sometimes it doesn't. So this a uh, this spawn is going to come here. This spawn is going to come here. So typically on this map or any map, but this one especially, this team is going to be mostly in this factory area, and they're going to spread out a little bit in here. This team here is going to end up having this whole area. And as us, for us, Blue 4, we're going to mostly control that area. So obviously this is really holding true for us. Our spawn vix even here, our helis are probably landing over there. And then understanding where a lot of the fighting is going to happen. So obviously towers are always key components to this. So obviously anywhere in this, area, this square here, there's a lot of fighting here over T5, the church over here, and all that. But just understanding the AO and where the enemies are going to be is huge, especially when you have players that are going for these huge kill numbers. They fully understand this. So study the AO, <coughs> learn where people are, are, are going to be, and learn where enemies are landing their helicopters. Alright, so anytime you get a kill, like put on this guy here, if I can actually kill him. So now, if there's anyone else in this area, they're going to know I'm up here. So you want to move. You want to, every time you get a kill, two, maybe even three, if you're using a silence gun, you want to move so that your enemy doesn't, can't pin you down and kill you. Always stay moving. Try not to move in open areas. If you're going to move in open areas, you know, it never hurts to actually smoke. Just to get across an open area. So say I know there's an enemy down there. Throw the smoke out, let it bloom up, and I can run across with the cover of that smoke, and I'm less likely to get shot. Alright, so the explosive perk. The explosive perk 
gives you access to an explosive satchel, which I can't place in the spawn area. You can put that on a 40 second timer to blow up, or you can blow it up automatically by yourself. On top of that, if you have a rocket launcher, it does give you an extra rocket for that lock rocket launcher. And as far as the guns, some guns have under barrel grenade launchers. That that also gives you access to. Medic perk allows you to revive in half the time and gives you an extra hundred dollars for each revive. The type 115 actually has an under barrel 50 cal that can be used to penetrate vehicles and helicopters to destroy them in the AO. So we're going to talk about the priority zone. Okay. So the priority zone. In this area, you're worth two people instead of one person, as all these people are worth one. If you're in this area, you're worth two. So a lot of people, a lot of newer players, will come from over here and run in this way or straight in this way into Pryo. Well, you don't want to do that. The best way, in my experience and in other players' experiences that I've talked to, is to see where this priority zone is moving. So right now, it's moving down this way and out this way, as you can see. So the best way to overtake it and to get into it is to actually set up in a building either down here or over here. That's the way the prio is moving. So while you're sitting here, you can actually kill the people in this that are trying to keep up with it. Now once you're in this, say you were in this building, holding it, waiting for people to run to you, you always want to stay on the front half of this AO. Most people die in the prio zone when you fall behind on the second half because you're trying to keep up. You spend more time trying to keep up. You don't have as much time to look around, gauge your surroundings. So always try to stay in that front half gives you a better chance of survival. Whenever you're playing King of the Hill, M brings up this big map. By control and left clicking, you can actually draw on the map. Depending on what talk channel you are in, will depend on where it writes, who's able to see it. So if you do it in the side channel, everyone on your team is going to be able to see it. So this being said, let's say I've just spotted enemy spawn vehicle right here. Well, I can circle it or double click to put a dot and a description and I can type in enemy spawn vehicle. So now my whole team knows there is a spawn vehicle right there right at that location or say you've seen three enemy helicopters land in this yard here well I could put a square around that yard and say enemy heli landing here or if I know if one team's really trying to take over this factory area then you could put a dot up here enemy stronghold like I what now your team knows everything they need to know now a player with a rocket launcher is probably gonna move in on this location try to start blowing up the heli make him land somewhere else that he's less comfortable with a player might try to land in this tower and start taking down some of these enemies or a player with a rocket launcher can come up here and destroy the spawn vehicle it's just things like that help the team and that's what wins you games <coughs> Anytime you see this vehicle spawn in your spawn base, I always suggest driving it in. Once you drive this into the AO and park it inside of the area of operations, every player on your team that spawns on it until it gets destroyed will give you $50 in cash. Alright, and now that the spawn vehicle is in, I always suggest staying close by to help protect it. There goes one. There's fifty dollars. There's another fifty dollars. Another fifty dollars. So easy way to make money in the game. Just drive that vehicle in. Stay around to protect it. Make sure no one destroys it. It'll earn you a good bit of cash. A 
and just like that, use third person peeking to your advantage. I was able to see that guy and kill him and he never even knew I was here. When you guys are peeking around corners like this, make sure you're not standing too close. So right here, I'm aiming at that wall there, but if I shoot, my bullets are actually hitting this wall, as you can tell by the chunk marks that are coming off of it. You need to move slightly backwards and or out a little more to the side to actually shoot past the corner of this wall. All right, so you guys come across an enemy vehicle of any kind, shoot the wheel off. Of it. By shooting that wheel off of it, it will actually give you uh, the points once it either gets destroyed and or despawns. If you don't want to take time to shoot the wheel off of it, you can always toss a grenade at it, or if something's running, you can toss a grenade at it. And typically, the engine will shut off. Alright, what to do when you come across an enemy spawn vehicle? You don't always have to destroy it. Sometimes you actually just want to camp it and take away the huge asset for that team. Because if you see her and camp it, they can't actually spawn on it or else they're just going to die. So, do that instead of destroying it. Now, if they start to move it, then I suggest destroying it. So we're going to see here for a minute and see if we can't get anybody to spawn in here and actually kill them. Let's see how long we can deny this spawn vehicle for. Alright guys, so anytime you kill an enemy, or you find a dead body, walk up to it, you'll get this little symbol right here, rearm. That'll give you extra smokes, extra normal grenades. If you press I, you'll be able to see his inventory. Go to his book bag, grab his first aid kits. Those will actually help you out in the long run. Uh, you only get two, unless you have medic perk, then you get a few extra. But I always suggest rearming and grabbing other people's med kits, keep you in the fight for longer. If you get hit, you'll have some extra heals.